<coughs> Another area that one could talk about for hours on end is logical puzzles. Uh, the earliest of these, as far as I know of, is the one about Epimenides of about 600 BC, who came out with the completely okay statement, all Cretans are liars. And that's fine until you realize that he himself was a Cretan, and therefore that statement is a lie, and therefore, it, well, if you work it through, you can see that that statement is neither true nor false. Um, and there are lots of logical puzzles you can look at. Some of you will know these ones of, of, of Lewis Carroll. Who, uh, Lewis Carroll spent a lot of time on logical puzzles, as you'll see if you come to my lecture on the 3rd of July, or if you buy the book. Um, here's a, 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 a typical one, and it, it, it's an extended uh, syllogism. Uh, syllogisms were discussed by Arist Aristotle, uh, things like uh, all men are mortal, Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal. Okay? But you don't need to have just two premises, you can have any number. So here's one with three, and this is quite an easy one to sort out. And the nice thing about Dodgson's examples is that they're, they're quite entertaining. So babies are illogical. Nobody is despised, who can manage a crocodile? Illogical persons are despised. What can you deduce from these three premises? <coughs> well, if you look at the first and the last, if babies are illogical and illogical persons are despised, you can deduce that babies are despised. Okay? Well, if babies are despised, but nobody is despised who can manage a crocodile, then you can deduce that babies cannot manage crocodiles. Okay? So that was quite a simple one that you can actually work out yourself. But he had some more complicated ones. And what he did, I mean, he, he used to regard these puzzles, these logical puzzles, as excellent training for children's minds. And in fact, he devised a method which used a board and counters, which he put in, in various different places, for actually working out um, puzzles of this kind. And, <coughs> and, um, and, and, and he, he said that he, he successfully taught this method uh, he taught it in some, some of the Oxford schools. He taught it to, uh, to, to children of ages 12, 13, 14, and so on. And many of them have already quite caught on. And to see how clever it is, I mean, here, here's an example with five um, premises. No kitten that loves fish is unteachable. No kitten without a tail will play with a gorilla. Kittens with whiskers always love fish. No teachable kitten has green eyes. No kittens have tails unless they have whiskers. And then using all his counters and everything and, and carrying out his, his procedure, you can deduce, as I'm sure you've already worked out, that no kitten with green eyes will play with a gorilla. <coughs> <laughs> but what makes these good is that, first of all, they're, they're, they're very entertaining. And secondly, they can get quite complicated. Now, this one has five. Uh, some of them had ten. Uh, he even constructed examples of 40 or 50 premises. Uh, and all quite entertaining to read. And then you can just sort of work them all out and work out the, the, the conclusion, which you probably wouldn't be able to do just by thinking it through. <coughs> Here's a different sort of logic pro problem. Uh, it actually comes from, this, from Averbark and Chine. It's one of the ones I always enjoy setting, setting students. And when you first look at it, you just haven't a clue how, to, how you're going to solve it. Um, and, and, uh, but I, I rather like it. So here, here goes. So here's a problem in logic. Pamela Potter's peas pot pot pottage is putrid, provided that Pablo Picasso painted potted palms. Either Pablo Picasso painted potted palms, or Peter Piper did not, did, uh, did not pick a peck of pickled peppers. You're also told there are two possibilities. Either Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, or else it is impossible that both Pablo Picasso did not paint potted palms, and that Pamela Potter's porridge is putrid. And what you're asked, the big question of all time, is, is Pamela's porridge putrid? Okay. Anyone know the answer? It's not obvious, is it? And yet it's quite easy, easy to work out. I mean, I'll go through it fairly quickly. Uh, we haven't actually sort of done anything on sort of sorting out logical puzzles, but let me just, first of all, show you how, by choice of letters, you, can, you simplify it a lot. So first of all, we, we use letters P, Q, and R for our notation for these three statements. Okay. Then the first statement says that Q implies P. That if, um, if Pablo Picasso painted potted palm, palms, then the porridge is putrid. Second one says that either Q or not R. 
And the third one, if you work it out, says that, that either R is true or it's not true that, that, Q, that not Q and not P are true. Okay? That sounds complicated, but it's just a question of, of writing this out. And now we've got to sort these out. And uh, with the class, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have a bit of practice with easier ones, and then we'll do it. But in fact, it's not really very difficult, um, because let, let's, let's see what happens if we assume that P is false. If P is false, then the first thing tells you that, that Q is false, because if Q is true, then P will have to be true. Okay? So you know that Q is, Q is false. And the second one, um, knowing that Q is false, um, well, if either Q or not R is true, uh, if Q is false, then not R <coughs> must be true, and therefore R is false. And then if you look at the third one and work it through, it turns out this is a, this, this is a, this is a, a contradiction, that this can't possibly hold, because not Q and not P are both, are both true, so this is true, so not it is false. So, so, so you've got either R or this are true, but we know they're both false, so that's a contradiction. So this arises from assuming P is false, and so the only conclusion you've got is that P is true, and you'll be delighted to know, or perhaps not, that Pamela's porridge is indeed putrid. Okay. <coughs>